Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show you guys how we can turn a photo into a moving image inside of DaVinci Resolve 16. So the first step is that you're probably going to want to be working with an image that has a very large resolution compared to the base timeline resolution. So if you are running a timeline that has a 180p resolution or 1920 by 1080 pixels, then you're going to want a still image that is much bigger than that. And the reason for that is that in order to add animation, to a image such as changing a property like pitch over time by default anything that's going to change the original display shape of the image away from its rectangular shape into something like a trapezoid or anything else or even just moving the image around on the screen is probably going to reveal some black space over the course of your animation. So in order to get around that you may need to zoom in on your photograph in order to hide those black spaces. So the more you zoom in on your photo, the lower the displaying resolution is going to be because you're only looking at a smaller portion of that photo. So the higher the resolution or megapixels of the original photo, the better it's going to look in the end. So just keep that in mind. Try to go for a high resolution shot. So let's return everything here to normal. So obviously from this photo, the ratio of the screen doesn't match the timeline resolution. So if we still need to keep that timeline resolution where it's at, um, like the 16 by 9 standard video ratio, then we may need to start by zooming in on the photo to begin with. In addition to just zooming in on the photo, we may take the position and adjust that a little bit, panning upwards, adjusting the vertical position so that we can keep the subject's face more in the frame. And let's just get the zoom to a nice place where we know that on the outside of this frame border, there's gonna be some extra image information that we can use kind of as our buffer as we are animating our image. So let's just get that position up a little bit more and uh, maybe we adjust this over to the right. And then this can be what we have as our initial framing. Now, if we're comfortable with that, then we can start separating the subject, this woman here, from the background image. And to do that, we need to copy our image over to a second video layer. So I'm just going to go forward in the timeline and control V paste in a copy and then pull this up with left click and hold to video track two or possibly video track three. If you ever decided that you want something like text to go between the background and the actor in front, the woman, then uh, you can take this to video track three and then put your title in between. And as we cut out the woman from the rest of the photo, you could have objects show in between. A basic idea of layering there. But if you don't need anything like that, then just having it on Video Track 2 will work fine. Next, we need to take the Video Track 2 image and go over to the color tab. So what we're going to be doing with the woman here is cutting her away from the background and then hiding everything in the background so that only the Video Track 1 version of the image will show for the background areas and then that'll allow us to manipulate them as two separate objects. So the best way to do this is going to be using a power window and we can use this curve option in order to basically draw a frame around the person even for a very complex shape. So if I click on curve you'll see a new power window is created here and we just need to zoom out a little bit and start left clicking to add points so I left click there once, I go up here, I left click again, and just do this until you go all the way around the woman's body. So you probably wanna leave a little bit of a buffer here. So you don't need to get precisely right on the dot of where her hair and the rest of her body. We're gonna be adding a little bit of softness later to kind of blur the line between the video track two image and the one on video track one. So let's just kind of roughly go around here but uh, do try to keep the line completely outside of the object you want to cut out to its own track. And then we go all the way around here and that should probably be good. So next we can add some inside softness and some outside softness. And what this will do is that when the layers blend together, it'll look a lot more seamless and you won't be able to tell as easily if we change anything on this track that's different from the background track. So next open up the nodes panel in the top right. And we're going to want to take the alpha channel from this track and put it to an alpha output. So to do that, right click and choose add alpha output. And now if we connect this to this, what's going to happen is that the alpha channel is now outputting from this node, which means everything that's outside of this power window is now hidden from this video track. So if I go to the edit page and I hide video track one, then you'll be able to see exactly what we are selecting with that power window. Now on video track one, which still has the full image, there is 
going to be a copy of the woman behind the video track 2 layer woman. So what we need to do is increase the size of the one on video track 2 to kind of completely cover the woman on the bottom video track. So if you go over to the sizing tab over here, we can increase the zoom of this track in order to make that happen. So if I pan over to the side, you'll see the original woman still there. But as long as you increase the size, you should be able to easily cover it. And if we adjust the position a little bit, as long as you had that softness there to kind of blur it things together, then even though the position might not match the original position, it still becomes pretty hard to tell uh, the difference between the video track 2 and the video track 1. So as we animate things, you'd have to pay pretty close attention in order to notice that they are not actually the same thing. But the big one to make sure as you're animating is to make sure that the woman below is covered by the woman on top. So let's position it right there for now. And now what we can do actually is to go to the bottom video track and to manipulate it where we can basically have the background do things, but only the background's going to move. The woman won't move unless we animate video track two. So for instance, I can go to frame zero here for this clip, and then we can adjust the yaw a bit in order to make it slightly slanted to the left. And then when we have that value set, we check the keyframe diamond in order to start an animation. We can go to the last frame of our image clip, and now we can increase the yaw to a new value. So we have to be careful, of course, that the background woman uh, is, is still covered with the copy on top. But we can always adjust that by going back over to the color tab and changing the position of the top clip. So let's go to the start of our video here and briefly take a look at this animated yaw value. So the image kind of turns on its side a little bit there, and that can be the start of things. And now let's go over to the color tab to make sure that the woman is still large enough to cover everything that it needs to cover. So back on the color tab, let's open up the timeline here and make sure that you are selecting the clip on video track two, and we can hide the timeline again. So let's go to the ending frame here, and we can either adjust the pan and the size here. Another option would be to take the video track two clip and to actually change its position so that it's always covering. So now if we play it one more time with this particular animation, it's actually always covering, and that might be preferable to increasing the size further in this case, uh, because if we increase the size too much, it's then she's going to be kind of being cut out from the frame. And that's probably not ideal. So you have a few options there. You just kind of need to make sure that the background is covered where it needs to be. Uh, but let's let's go with this for now. If we wanted, we can also take video track two and animate the zoom. So let's end up with the position and zoom here at the current values and we can adjust that a little bit at the start so if we come down here to the first frame and make it a zoom of 1.24 then now if we hit play then the woman's clip would actually increase in size over the duration personally though i'm not a huge fan so i'll remove that initial keyframe and let's just keep the video track 2 as being static for the time being so if you want the bottom track to have a little bit more movement, let's actually add in a keyframe for the pitch as well. So now we're going to be going top to bottom rather than left to right. So let's have the pitch at the first frame be a little bit angled downwards, but not too much that the black area starts to show again. And let's go to the final frame and put it in the opposite direction just a bit. So like 0 0.03 negative on the frame one and then positive 0.3 on the final frame. So obviously we've added a little bit of movement there, but it's not particularly interesting. So one way we could make this a lot cooler would be to actually add in some light rays. So if you go up to the effects library on the edit tab, scroll down to open effects, and then go down to resolve effects light, then we can add in light rays to the bottom clip. And if you have the pro version of DaVinci Resolve, you can also play around with lens flare and lens reflections as well but light rays is a cool tool in its own right. So let's go ahead and use light rays here. So you can see that just by adding in the light rays, it brightens up the scene a bunch. And the way it selects areas in order to add light rays from is by using this th source threshold. So uh, by default, the bright regions with the source threshold of 0 0.4, meaning anything that passes that threshold, gets to emit a light ray. So in order to make this more interesting, uh, what we can do is actually animate the position where the light rays are going to be emitting from. So to give it kind of a time-lapse feel, we can have the ray starting position 
which is currently set at the middle, start towards the left. So we'll kind of put it right above her head there and keyframe it at frame one. And then we can go to the final keyframe and increase the X position value. So if we go ahead and play this now, then the light rays are going to be animated along with the shot. Now, maybe that's way too dramatic of a move. So we can uh, go to the right keyframe and uh, lower the position down so that it's a lot more tame. So 0 0.1 increasing to 0 0.5 probably is going to start matching the change in the pitch and yaw a lot better. Another thing that we could do is modify the source threshold across time so that more light rays will show as the time goes on. So let's keyframe the source threshold at that 0.4 default, but at the final frame, go to the beginning and make it uh, something much higher to decrease the amount of light rays. So let's make it something like uh, 0.65. And now we can play it and then the amount of light rays that appear in the background are going to increase as well. We can also change the appearance of those light rays. So you may decide that you like CCD Bloom soft instead of the default soft. You can also adjust the length of those rays. So longer rays are going to make a lot more light, obviously. If you want to blur it a bit more, then you can increase softness. Note that if you go too far with this effect that you may get some overlap issues between the top clip and the bottom clip. So keep that in mind. But as long as you do like a low intensity, you shouldn't really have an issue. We can also lower the brightness a little bit. If you want, you could also change the color of the lighting, but I think white will do good for most purposes. So if we play this back again, um, it's not looking too bad right now, but maybe we do actually want the woman to be animated a little bit as well. It's uh, kind of up to you here but I'm kind of feeling like trying it. So at frame one, let's go ahead and maybe set the position of her to be a little bit lower. And then we go to the final frame. Oh, it looks like there's already a keyframe set. So at the final keyframe, that's her position. By chance, that's actually where I think I wanted her to be. So let's try hitting play here and seeing how that looks. So I think that actually looks a little bit nicer now that uh, she has a little bit of movement in addition to the background as well. And that seems to be looking pretty solid overall. So the basic takeaway from this video should be that even with the static image, you can animate it simply by using the properties in either the default inspector for any video clip or adding an open effects onto your video clips. And that by using power windows in order to cut away objects, you can actually separate something from the original image into its own separate image. And then you can manipulate the position and everything else about that separated object individually from the original background image. So by using keyframes and separating things from power windows, you should be able to add a little bit of animation to even a completely static image taken by a regular camera or phone as a single image. So that's gonna be it for this video. I've been Chris, I hope you guys learned a bit here and I will see you guys in my future video content.